Hi, welcome back. It's been a while uh, since part one of part build video. Uh, I've put a couple of videos out, um, however, things in life have gotten away. Um, I'm not going to go into detail now, but I'll let you know as we go through the video. So, just want to get on with what we're here today, part two of building this. So, this is where we're going to get part one. I built basically this section, and then this section the video today, we're going to look at obviously rolling the rest of it, cutting the blanks, rolling the cones, welding, hammering the welds to get it all nice and smooth. And as you can imagine on the way there's been a few errors, things have uh, not quite right gone to plan. So uh, yeah, join me if you'd like to know how to make this. <laughs> Right, chop some tube up. As you can see, there's a big gap in there, but I'm going to fill that with weld. A bit gash, but I don't be spending ages machining it out of solid. I've just cleaned it up with the electric file. Just welding wire, which I've flattened, just to get about the right distance. Keeps that nice and central. Voila. Be uh, quite tough going, and I may live to regret what I've just done. However, it's all a learning experience. So, my plan made uh, this stub. I didn't, and I meant to make that a little bit bigger, but I didn't. And I've put a couple of angles on there, I think 45, 15, 5, something like that, just to get some good flow. Because this is actually a little bit smaller than what the outlet is to the exhaust port. So, I've done that, and obviously, I need to hold it in. And typically the standard one is just a little bit too small, so that will sit there. So I need to make a new one of these. So I'm going to use this 6mm plate and go from there. So, I've roughly cut this with an angle grinder and now I'm going to stick it in the four drill chuck. Okay, I've just got this lined up, I've got a fixed centre there, picked up off the hole of the drill before. Now I'm just going to very gently go around and tighten, tighten these up. So I just need to trim around here so it will fit now. I've gone around it with the uh, angle grinder. Okay, so we'll call that done. That fits on there. Let's jiggle it. Yeah, it won't feel too bad. 
So, as you all know, uh, it should be quite a bit further ahead with this, maybe somewhere near 100 mile an hour, but we're not. So, why? Um, yeah, just things with life. Um, fortunately, relationships uh, broke down uh, beginning of the year ish, and a bit more of that, so lots of stuff to sort out, which took time and energy and yeah, distraction. So, I know I put a few videos out that weren't. These take quite a lot of effort, building a pipe, quite a lot of time and that, so I tried to do a few things, but maybe I should have just stuck with what I was trying to do. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, there was that. Anyway, we got sorted. Moving on, thinking I'll get back on the bike and uh, see what else happened, but I say we'll carry on. We're building the pipe for a minute and I'll catch back up with you in a bit. So, what we've got now is joining this bit to there. So, what have I done? I bought motor again because I used to like the layout. It's got a couple of cool features. Notice this is version 8 um, and it allows me to break it down and I can work out the lengths as it goes along. But is what I'm interested in is getting it to fit. So, I have this. I don't know how well it's going to focus. It's a piece of bendy rule or ruler and I know the lengths and I know I'm going to put a 90 degree bend in and then it's going to come down and then it's going to do this bend whatever that is I shall measure it but I know roughly at what length I'm going to be at and then this is going to sit on here about this and all I'll do I've got a straight bit here so I'll have this angle come out here and then I'll twist this just by twisting the section to head it out there. So a bit of an explanation of what we're doing. So these first section two and three, I've split them up. So section two, A, is just a straight bit, which is 40 mil long. Section two B, which is the rest of it, 45 mil, has been split into 20 degree bends in three sections. I've also put a five degree cut there and a five degree cut on the start of section 3 to give me another 10 degrees and then I bent section 3 over 60 degrees over 6 pieces and that should give me 90 degrees total angle so this is the first section of the pipe first bit of the header that I've sectioned up so put the figures in there and then I can print the development and off it goes to the printer All the other bits I've just numbered up, so this is actually section 3, piece 6, section 3, piece 4 and so on. So I'm going to cut all these out now. So, just remains now to lay all these patterns out. So I'm going to go through, just check them all. I'll scuff them round with a bit of cloth just to take the edge off and give it a good surface for welding and then I'll bend the edges over over a piece of tube just to get it started and then stick it through the slip roll. I'm doing this, actually just getting the blank, manipulating it so it sits nicely and then I'm holding it with my gloved hand, I'll tweak that a bit more, where are we, I might need to file that a bit but I'll hold it like that and then just tack it, simple, apart from the first one I've tried where I burnt through so I might have to remake this bit. Oh well. Right, a couple of errors already. For some reason, 
the cut there didn't turn out as to 5mm and I appear to have <laughs> made this was the original one that was too long and this new one I made is about sticking out as far so when you do that it catches not a problem when you're going in a straight line but with me sat on here because I'm fat it is gonna compress the forks a bit and it is gonna probably go into the tire so yeah plan was to refine that file it down just so it was a really good fit on there which I didn't and I just welded it so that's no use as well so where did they go wrong well I've just had a back look over my notes I don't know why that didn't cut out an angle however I've got around that issue by reprinting those sections you can individually reprint and you can probably see from here this is the original section I made and see now it's fairly fairly straight there whereas this one's got it's more of a sort of bow tie so that is definitely better I've done those two bits so these I've got a seven and a half degree cut there seven and a half degree cut there give me 15 so that's going to bring this round a little bit more hopefully it will miss I'm hoping and why <laughs> where did they go wrong well I had a look back so originally when I did it uh, to actually fit the bike I left that this bit a little bit longer at 60 mil versus what I've got at the minute 40 so I I'm starting from here however over 25 and 50 mil of the second section of the header I did the full 90 degree bend so total distance a 90 degree bend was within 75 mil whereas this time I've done it over 139 which is why it's gone like much longer rather than coming in shorter so error I've not done this for a while so yeah I'm going to make these mistakes but I thought I'd share them with you maybe you guys might learn from it hopefully I learn from it anyway so I was on the phone even night to uh, McAbbey and I was telling him how I did it and he's like why are you tracing around it why not just cut it a little bit oversize and then just cut it straight off here so this is pretty sticked, sticked stuck on and I'm going to cut to that line there and then I'm getting no because I'm making an error every time I draw around it and I've just done that now definitely a lot easier so I'm going to get these cut out and I'll get it back to you after I've done it. However, this, I can already tell, is a lot better. Okay, they've turned out really well. Pleased with that. Alright, so after buggering one of these up, I forget which one. That one. I thought I'd try this method. Uh, I saw it on video recently uh, by Lang Tuning. So hold it there. It may have been Lang Tuning, it may have been the guy that's doing um oh can't remember who it is now. He's doing some classic jower or something like that. I can't remember. Anyway, he was making a pipe. And yeah, use this, it will probably take a bit of the heat out of it to stop it from burning through. So this is how I'm going to do the little rings now. And the spirits are talking to me. They say that's a good idea. So yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> just about to get going. Dad has a fall. Uh, it's just over 80. A bit of Alzheimer's as well. So uh, need to keep visiting him in hospital. Uh, he was in there for about eight weeks, then went to home some distance away, so another five so weeks uh, visiting him most days, so that's pretty much my capacity taken out by the time I get home, so again, not a lot got done. We're moving there now, he's still at home, but it's a lot closer, it doesn't take quite as much of the day, so hopefully back up and running again soon. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit of a delay, and uh, other things is... Uh, so previously I used to sand all my 
sections on this. It's just my drill, piece of plate aluminium, and yeah, it works well. Switch it on, it works well. Yeah, it's good. Um, however, let me get it all in. I've got one of these uh, off Amazon. I'll leave a link. Why did I get this? Well, I've quite fancied one of these for a while. Um, that's an 8 inch disc. It's also uh, half a kilowatt, so 500 watt motor in here. So that's three quarters of a horsepower, which as we know, power is a rate of doing work, so more power, faster you can grind stuff off. So, yeah, I thought I'd get this, and uh, I'm going to be using that from now on. So, I'm afraid... Much better now. Um, I've got an angle between these two bits here, about 15 degrees. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a 5 degree angle on that and that, so I'll give you 10 degrees there and then doing over 10 degrees there, maybe 15 and 15, just to get this to tuck in a lot more. Made another front section. So that's on there and I've put a six degree cut on each section. So you've got 12 degrees and 12 degrees there. And then as it goes into there, it's 12 degrees. So I'm gonna get a little bit of extra turn as you can see. Pop that on there. Yep. What do we do with that? So, a few casualties. Uh, made them wrong, you know where they're going. Okay, the plan of attack with this is I'll peel this off, use a bit of acetone just to clean any tackiness off, give it a wire brush and then uh, start tacking it together right, got a little tack on there yeah, still lined up that's that one I'm a little bit baggy here so it will need a bit of a knock and it's a little bit so if I squeeze that there just a little bit squeeze that down yeah that's going to be a bit better so again it's just a bit of manipulation just a little probably tap there and I'll put one back there tacks in I'm going to tack the next bit on then I'm going to Hammer it a little bit and I'll show you that. So, yeah, this is another bit I got. These are, I got these from I think some Iron Gate website where you could order bits to make your own iron gates. It's just drilled and tapped. That goes on there. So, different sizes. Not essential, it doesn't matter. Should maybe polish it a bit, but as you can see, next size up, all the way up to really big ones and that goes on down there on a slightly bigger thread how do we use this well yeah just trying to get those bits to stick together and planish the weld so you're trying to planish this weld stress relieve it get it nice and smooth and take any any bits out and then yeah so I've done that knock them together I'll weld that then I'll give it a good hammer along the weld to planish it. So that's set roughly where I want the pipe to be. As I said before, fitment's not critical because I don't think this is going to be the final pipe. I'm going to try lots of others. However, I'm going to give it a go. I know that distance I need to bridge is 75mm. So I've got a tie wrap, cut it down to 75mm so I can just sort of check a bit of bend are about there so it's going to sit roughly about there
Right, what angle do we need? Let's use this piece of paper. Put that like that. Yeah, that's about it. So I measure that at 38 degrees, I'm going to go 50, that just gives me a little bit of flex. Okay, so I've cut the 50 degree bend out and it's what I wanted to show is if I stack all these bits, 180 or 180-ish to one another, you've effectively got a straight cone. So it's what I am doing, if I stack them all up like this, line in order, joins up. That'll give me 50 degrees. If you can see, it's not very easy to keep these bits balanced. But if I want something somewhere in the middle and I want to twist a little bit, which I do, I can just turn these round and I don't get quite as much angle. And I can also point this in a slightly different direction. holes they're not too bad but when I tried tacking it didn't quite catch so I ended up with a few little holes so what I'm going to do is go over those a little bit of filler wire one mil filler wire 0.8 mil I can't remember and just fill those in first and then I'll fusion weld the rest So, all welded together, I'm still getting back into welding it, uh, focus, yeah they're not too bad, I've turned the amperage down a little bit as well, so that's what I'm going to do tomorrow, because it's now about 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to hammer those edges, see if I can get them a little bit rounder, I don't want to do it now, because I don't think the neighbours would appreciate it, anyway. That's where we're at. Here we go. You can see angles, angles, angles. I'm going to try and just blend that in a little bit. This is one thing I'm not great at. And I do struggle with the manipulation of sheet metal in terms of hammering it. So we'll see how we get on. A little bit better.
And another thing is, uh, youngest started riding these things again, so they take a little bit of time. I say a little bit, a lot. And the eldest is beginning to fishing, uh, so we've done quite a lot of competitions. And again, these things aren't an hour, then pick them up. It, it's a full day thing, and I'm there with them all day, so a lot of my weekends get eaten up as well, so yeah. But I'm back on it. Treat for all the guys in America watching, we're going Imperial because. EGT bosses. Luckily, I've already got some made, so I don't have to make any more of them. However, I do need to make some bungs for when I'm not using it, and I need to find my EGT probes. So this was uh, for my X7, that's the ignition and they are the uh, amplifiers for my SPA EGT gauge that broke so I am a bit fixed however I need these I just found, I knew I had one somewhere. So, a bit of bar, love a bit of hex bar. I'll just machine these out of it, part them off, face it up. And that's a bunk, so when you're not using EGT probe, you can wind that in. That's a tapered thread as well, so it's a couple of degrees. And if you wind that in, that'll seal up quite nicely. Part of the plan, I need the silencer, so I've nicked one off my X7 pipe. There, I was going to just weld this on, but this is part of the pipe, and I'm going to sell the X7 at some point. So, I'm just making a new one. So, I've got a bit of six mil plate marked it out center, two holes, 48 centers. Um, I'm going to pretty much do as before drill a hole through there, bore it out, drill holes there. Uh, I shall cut this square with the angle grind and slitting saw, and then. Uh, Hold it somehow in the middle on a mandrel and then I'll machine it. Right, so what I'm doing, I've got, this is obviously not welded yet, but that's going to sit on there at a bit of an angle, about uh, there. I'm then going to mount it here because I just want a bit of support at the back, but I need a way, obviously this is going to move in and out. So, I've caught with that, that's going to sit on there, and then I'm going to cut a slot in here, and then put a mount on there, and that will allow it to go back and forth, he says. So, this is the last section of the baffle cone, and this is the tailpipe silence is going to go on there, I've just welded that on, I'm actually quite pleased with that. This is a bigger diameter, this is 23... 22, yeah, about 23.3 for cash. This is about 19, just under 19 mil, 18 point, it's not quite round, 18.8. So, why am I doing it like this? Well, the original pipe for the Practical Sports Bike Challenge was this, and it had about 18 and a half, 19 mil outlet here. So, this is where the restriction is, and that's going to sit in there. Because that's a bigger diameter, this shouldn't actually restrict the flow out of the exhaust more than this restriction here, which is quite a bit smaller. Although the diameter is only a few mil, the actual percentage varies quite a lot more. Normally, I'd use these inserts and make an arrangement so I can swap out the diameter of the outlet. However, I just want to establish a pipe, basic pipe layout. I don't want to have too many things I can play with so I'm just going to go with that. I know that should be good and it shouldn't melt at around 100 mile an hour. Out 
Ah, no welding boogers here. So, somehow I need to keep that from bouncing up and down. That's going to miss there. That's going to... So I've got this bit of square tubing. I'll put it on the mill. I'm going to cut out that. Get rid of that bit. So I'm going to cut out a semicircle like that. It's going to sit on there. Probably knock some of that off there. The angle grinder. Stick hole in there. And then that will then be able to move up and down with this pipe. I'll probably elongate this a bit. It'll give me a little bit of up and down as this moves back. Okay, to take any video of uh, making this. So uh, this is the end result. And I've got it all there ready for welding on. Right, so pipe done. Pretty pleased with that. Whether it works, I don't know. Dana will tell us that. So that'll be the next video. Not sure how well it's going to work. I think I've got ignition problems, so I need to run that on the dyno. So it might be an ignition, how to solve the ignition problem video. I don't know. It may be how this pipe works. I don't think there's enough time area with the current setup anyway. It's nowhere near Chris's, so potentially this pipe might rev, but might not make the power because there's not enough blowdown time area. But we shall see. Uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, subscribe, all that good stuff. And yeah. Hopefully I'll catch you reasonably shortly, a couple of weeks maybe, if I'm lucky. Cheers.